very sad again. This is horrible. It just burns me out. People have died. This is just sad. Oh my God, no. It's just really unfortunate and... This is affecting a lot more than we know. Albuquerque killer targeted victims because he was angry over his daughter marrying a Shiite Muslim. It is just unfortunate. I and mean, may God rest, you know, the, the people who lost their lives. This is not Islam and this is not, this is just, I don't know. It was just the fact that he was Shia. I don't think what he did at all signifies what a Muslim should do and how a Muslim should act. Like he had this resentment towards his daughter's behavior but this does not excuse for you to go out of your way and take away lives of innocent people who had no part. This man is completely throwing away everything about Islam that he should have been taught. You kill one man, you kill all humanity. That's not changing nothing. Like, for instance, you're killing somebody because you hate them and envy it. But yet, in you is still envy. You're still a jealous person. So that's, you're still going to be hateful regardless if that person is dead or alive. That's something within you. This is so wrong of you as a parent to take away another person's child, another person's like loved one as a Muslim, it is so wrong that he did that. And if your daughter wants to marry whoever she wants to marry. That Muslim probably would have treated your daughter better than anyone else. And you just took that life. You would never think that this kind of stuff happens like. Especially in our country, in, in the United States, like, you know, these kinds of stories you hear a lot in different parts of the world where there's Typically, Shia minority and a Sunni majority in, in that country, right? You can't turn a blind eye to what is genocide, to what is oppression. So I hope this is a wake-up call for all our Sunni brothers and sisters that we need to address this. Four people died and they didn't have to. If you aren't around a Shia person and there's, you know, some kind of misconceptions that are being talked about in those closed circles and you know it's not true or you are skeptical of the truth behind it, speak up because that's where this kind of stuff starts. But at the end of the day, if you can say one word that will kind of make that person who was saying something against Shia Muslims kind of just think back, like maybe I shouldn't have said that, right? That's one way you can kind of help in preventing these kinds of things from ever happening, happening again. We're taking a quick pause because over half of you guys watching are not subscribed to our channel. Please make sure to support us by subscribing, liking, and commenting. And now back to the video. Muslim woman shot and killed by ex-husband before he shot himself in Chicago. Right. Like, you know, in Islam, like men are supposed to protect women. You know, you're supposed to treat women righteous and they're precious. And so the fact that this happened, I feel like it's so sad because it must be so scary for women now to hear that and think that this may happen to them too. The thing that's always bothered me is the fact that it, when you're a Muslim couple and you want a divorce, you have to say it three times for it to be official, but it's very looked down upon by the community, right? And women would report domestic violence. The community and the culture, it's kind of looked down upon. It's like, oh no, just ha be patient with him, or it's been dismissed. And so they are not being heard, validated, or seen. A lot of guys don't have sisters in their families, and that's no excuse, right? You shouldn't have to rely on an older, younger sister, a mother to respect women, right? They're humans just like we are. I heard a lot of stories like that. It's like people do some effed up stuff and then they know they effed up so they off themselves. It's just, it's just crazy. There's one of those moments where like I have it all in here and it's like all emotional and I'm like, you know what's particularly sad about this story is that because she was a Muslim woman trying to uplift other women, other Muslim women to feel able and capable of leaving their husband, like being independent. She was talking about like the divorce stigma. She's talking about just like building yourself, like after being divorced, like your whole, like, especially in those like toxic relationships, your whole identity gets like surrounded because your inner circle gets closed and closed off. It's not like this happened out of no context. She moved to another place to get away from this man. She divorced him because there were things going on and she still couldn't find safety. It's just insane. Like they really sit there and call themselves a Muslim and then they'll turn around and do something like this. So it's just very scary that like women can't even speak up about it because here like is an example of how like dangerous it is to try to bring light to something that's like so taboo within the community. You know, the last couple decades or so, the roles of a man and a woman were like defined. And as a result, like I imagine, you know, these men felt like they had a right for validation to like do what they do. So I think it's more of a cultural issue. Mosque in Minneapolis. Minnesota vandalized more than 50,000 mosques and damages. 
how do you prevent this, right? Like why? How much hate do you have to have inside you, percolating inside you? How do you feel good after this? What are you like? Are you so accomplished? What's next? Like how does someone bring themselves to that point? I don't understand. People just feel too entitled to be able to just go out and do things on their own accord and just destroy things for people. Like you don't have the right at all. Like this is terrible. This is us. This is so sad. And I just don't think anyone should ever mess with the place of worship. Like. Mm -hmm. at all broken glass damaged doors and bent donation boxes like what the donation boxes come on bro like what and that's what makes me more confused and angry because it's just like people don't think before they do this and it's obviously very evident in this but like i just get so confused like how do people not relate to themselves first like think about why am I about to do this? Why am I doing this? Like, what's the point? Like, why are you so angry over it? I'm so confused. I just, I would love to know what this, what went through this person's head. A sense of safety is kind of lost. So it's something that really needs to, you know, be seen as, as like a larger and longer impact of, of these kinds of things. And 50,000 in losses. I know that like a lot of mosques go through a lot to just have fundraisers because they're not being supported other than by the community and the people. And, you know, they try hard to raise as much money as they can to try to offer as many resources as possible to the congregation. But, you know, to lose $50,000, that sets them back quite a bit. So this is horrible. All eyes on Pakistan. All eyes on Pakistan. More than 33 million people have been affected by ongoing flooding across the country. This is just sad. More than 1,200 people have died thus far. One in three victims of the floods are children. Oh, the floods. Oh my God, no. What is happening in Pakistan? At least 1.4 million homes have been destroyed. Like, where's the support for this country where's the support for pakistan where's that financial that foreign aid so what can we do we we just need to really honestly just come together and really take away our differences and just connect and help each other because we all deserve the same right same meaning we all have the same meaning in life just to live and be content pakistan which is a country that produces less than one percent of global emissions is experiencing this climate catastrophe and who are the people that we're going to hold accountable I mean, these corporations, these organizations that are producing 70% of these emissions, whether that be the, the meat industry or the petroleum industry, the oil industries, gas companies, power plants. Due to lack of drinking water and waterborne diseases, illnesses and deaths are increasing at a rapid rate. It's wild. We need to help them. Seriously. This is one third of someone's the country. Imagine like one third of New Jersey underneath water. Like imagine that. Or like one third of like New York. Where's the Facebook profiles? Where's the Instagram pictures? Where's the stickers? Where's the gifts? Where's all these things that people want to like use to help people out? Like, it's so sad. So not to draw comparisons, but you know, people in Ukraine, they have been experiencing war, right? And they have been getting the help and the news coverage that they needed to get that help. Why isn't it the same for Muslim people and people of color? It's not fair and it's not right. <laughs>